Hey everyone, welcome back to Heroes Workshop. This is Stealth. And this man over here is Mr. Sprickin of the Sprickin Dynasty. That's right. This man has something to say. Hold on. No. Shut up. Okay. Okay, so today's project, it's gonna be a project that's been sitting in storage for a long time. It's a Iron Man replica suit. It's the Mark III. It's a urethane suit. It's like half finished. Have you seen that one, Sprickin? Uh, only in pictures, man. Okay, so he hasn't seen it. Some parts are painted, some parts aren't. We're gonna go to storage, we're gonna get the box. We're gonna bring the box, we're gonna open it up. and show what parts need work, what parts need to be painted, what we're gonna do. And then at the end, Mr. Sprickin will wear the suit and he will be the uh, tribute and wear it. Yeah! Some of the parts, like I said, are already painted. Like, I remember painting the legs completely. So you can see, like, the shoes are painted. There's some... Uh, Crocs inside <laughs> so you put you just slide your your foot in just to make it easy and there's a strap on the back and then the uh, Shins are done. So this helmet is unfinished. It needs to be painted But I, I may have another one that's already finished and also has the uh, motorized faceplate installed and I have this uh, Neck that I casted I casted it out of urethane and I tinted it red and it turned out really nice uh, it's one of the first times I did a tinted rubber, and it turned out really good. It, it almost matches the paint. And these hands I got, um, I forgot where I got them from, but I didn't make those. They were just pre-made hands, just because those are annoying to cast. These, uh, they're like a rubber kind of plastic. Okay, so Mr. Sprickin is just test fitting some parts here, just to make it easier to show you guys. So here's the bicep. There is a left and right bicep, and here is the forearm and the uh, upper forearm with the elbow section. This, uh hinges here with a Chicago screw or a bolt and nut and it just pivots so here are the shoulder pieces it's a two-piece system so that way it uh, actually pivots on this uh, screw here okay so here is the uh, the back butt section with the back spine and the back upper back section here and then that back connects to this chest and we have the stomach which connects to this area here why don't you guys get a better look at the shin? So uh, the shin is in two parts. So what I did was I have it attached by elastic, so that when you get your leg in, your foot isn't hindered because this part is very narrow. But up here is okay. But by the time you get here, your foot won't be able to get through. So I have a little bit of give, so that way your foot can fit through, and then you just let go, and then you're, it will come back to this. So when you're walking, it shouldn't open and close, and uh, kill the look of the seam line. And also this here, this is the instep. I just have that floating on an elastic, it's attached. There's, it's just free moving, so there's less of a chance it's gonna crack, because it uh, can flow left and right and up and down. Okay, so this is the unibeam. Obviously, you guys know what this is. This goes here. The legs turned out really nice. I'm happy how I uh, painted them way back when. Uh, I really like this look. It's not too glossy. It was a satin clear coat. When I painted it, I liked it. It was like really clean, and I was like, oh, it needs some, uh, it really needs some character. So I just added the touches of uh, dry brushing. Like I said, we're going to worry about all the connecting points. Uh, so we're going to figure out how to connect the legs. I have a, an idea that I've used before. It's a suspender system. So we're just going to attach straps to the back and the front. So you can see here, I started to do one. So it's just a nylon strap with a buckle. And then you would have the, uh, the male connector. But then when you wear it, it has to be like an X. Uh, kind of way so it doesn't slide off your shoulder. So we need to get nylon strap buckles and uh, Chicago screws. Okay, you can see here one of the thighs has a washer and a nut and a bolt. So I like that it really holds well. And we're also going to do suspenders on the stomach and spine like the back area. So that way because you can have to make those to hold up uh, that while you're wearing everything on top. Okay, so here we have Mr. Sprickin and he's wearing one of the thighs. Okay, so it's just like a suspender and it's kind of going over his shoulder this way because if it was going over his shoulder this way, there's more of a chance it's gonna slip off. So we're gonna have it like in an X once we have uh, both done. So it's basically just a, a tri-slide uh, with nylon strap and just a buckle here, a quick release buckle. And it's a simple setup like that and then just connect it with some uh, screws and those washers that we got. We were going to try on the thighs and shins together, but Mr. Sprickin said that this part here is a huge impingement on his knee. And I can tell because uh, this is like the uh, where the thigh meets the, the shin. And this uh, area here is uh, pretty narrow. So I was going to heat shape it out, but I still think that eventually it would kind of bow in again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this off with a Dremel. 
and then I will create some kind of new uh, connecting point and then paint it the same color as the shin and it should be fine and we'll bolt it up and then Mr. Spricken will try it on. Okay, so update on the leg parts. So here we have the new connector that bridges the gap from the thigh to the shin. So you can see here, it all together and it lines up perfect. It actually lines up better than before. Uh, it lines the, the two pieces up perfectly, see? And it can come down and it bends. It does a nice bend. So it articulates a bit better so when the wearer is using it, it doesn't impinge inside your knee. Okay, so we, here we have the arm parts. Here we have the left bicep. Here the upper forearm section uh, with the elbow here and the main forearm section. So um, we have a connecting point here at the elbow. So to connect the elbow, we're gonna use two Chicago screws. I don't know if you guys know what Chicago screws are, but they're great for doing joints like this. So here is the, uh, the two pieces for the Chicago screw. I think they're also called uh, binding posts. So you're gonna have one here. So these are probably, uh, I forget the size of the length, but they're, they just go here. You can have one coming out the back. Like so, and see how it sticks out. Then you take the other part, the screw, and screw it in. I'm just gonna do it by hand. So these are connected, so they can uh, pivot like so. See, nice and smooth. And then you have the forearm. I have a, a hole here. I have a hole here, and then it just keeps the forearm in place because you don't want the forearm twisting off of this. You want it to stay in a stationary position. Okay. So you have the full um, bicep, upper forearm, and main forearm assembly. You can see that the forearm will not go anywhere. That way you don't want this uh, moving too much which scratches the paint underneath here. Looks really good, man. Yeah, it's got some nice lines. Yeah. Especially like all of this. Yeah, the back. I like the back of the, uh, the tricep area. It looks really cool. Okay, looks good. So we'll do the same thing to the other arm. And then uh, we'll start moving on to the stomach parts and then the chest and back. We have the stomach that's going to connect to the back but we're going to have to do a suspender system similar to the one that we did on the legs so it'll be just like that and then we will rig up the chest and the back section so we connected the uh, sections together temporarily and then we're just going to flex the entire piece back to a more rounded shape so it can fit someone a bit better like it fits Mr. Spricken pretty good it's just, it needs a bit more roundness, so it doesn't, uh, it's not too... So it's not too snug on my yeah. uh, midriff, okay. whatever it's called. Yes, correct. Thank yes. you. Okay, so we went ahead and did the chest and back as well. So we connected everything, we're going to do the same thing, we're going to heat it up, and then we're going to flex it more in a rounded shape, so that way it fits them a bit better. So here we have the stomach and the back spine butt area thing. It's all connected with suspenders. So we got some progress. So we just put some Velcro uh, for the neck, the rubber, the, I think this is urethane rubber I casted it in. Yeah, so urethane rubber neck. We just put some Velcro and stuck it on. So now it can go on and off. And this will be much more comfortable, obviously, than wearing a resin cast uh, neck piece. See, here's uh, lots of mobility in his neck. And Super comfortable. Yeah. yeah, perfect. And today we finally get to paint the Iron Man suit. We'll be painting it using spray cans. Somewhere over here, I'll show you guys some of the paints that we'll be using to paint it. Thank uh, goodness that the legs are all painted. So all we need to do is match the paint of those legs to the rest of the armor. Okay, so everything seems to be ready to prime, but before I prime this section here with the spine, there's some paint that uh, kind of wrinkled here, the, my last attempt. So I'm just gonna sand all the imperfections down first, and then I'll prime uh, everything. But that needs to be taken care of first. So the paints that I used for all Iron Man cast suits in the past and today are these paints. They're Duplicolor Perfect Match. So you can get these at automotive stores. In Canada, I got these at Canadian Tire. For the red color, I use Infernal Red Metallic. And for the gold, I use Sunburst Gold Metallic. You can look these up online and the color codes will be there. So that way, if you can't find it in this specific brand, you can possibly find it elsewhere. So the primer I'm going to use is this Valspar primer 
and the clear coat will be the same brand but a satin finish the reason for the satin finish i know a lot of people are thinking maybe you paint your clear coat gloss so the suit's shiny but no the best look to me for an iron man suit i'm I always thought that a satin finish is best because you don't want it too glossy but you don't also want it you also don't want it too flat up and remove that layer of film that you think is not there but it, oh it's there all right trust me okay so we're just using uh, some aluminum tape to stick all the parts on stands so we can paint them and not have them fall off just gonna clean up the mess and we're gonna start priming everything
We finally completed the Iron Man suit. Thank you, Mr. Frickin, for, for trying it on. But I'm sure it was uh, a sucky but cool experience. Hi, hey, what's up? Hey, it's Mr. Sprickin in there, guys. Okay, so that's the finished, completed Iron Man suit. Thanks to Mr. Sprickin for suiting up. Uh, resin suits can be a little bit uncomfortable, but uh, they pay off in the end because it obviously looks a lot more realistic Yeah. in uh, this kind of material. How do you feel in that? Feels good. Feels nice and snug. I don't mm. mind being locked into it because okay. it feels like it's like it's not going to fall off me or move. Okay, so you feel like comfortable yeah. uh, having it on and yeah. you're not worried about uh, nothing digging in, in nothing's digging into me, mm -hmm. and uh, there's enough room in my chest and abdomen where I don't feel like I can't breathe. Like you're claustrophobic. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah, it looks really good on you, man. You uh, look like Tony Stark under there. No joke. Yeah. Thanks. Look at this guy, Tony Stark, dead ringer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hollywood. <laughs> That's right. Call me. Call. I put so much work into this years ago, and I'm glad that I was finally able to come full circle with this project and defeat the ghost of my past with the help of Mr. Sprickin, because I had no one else to put it on. <laughs> so that's it. This is Stealth and Mr. Sprickin. Mr. Sprickin, aka Tony Stark. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. This is the Heroes Workshop, and we'll be coming back with some new content soon. And remember to keep building and have fun.